Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the next lecture. Uh, this one is lesson six in unit three. It is also the longest title for a lesson, I hope, because uh, that is pretty long. Uh, and it is only part one, so there's two parts to this. You get to see that name twice. Um, let's get down to it. Uh, we are going to be talking about polynomials in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c when a does not equal one. What does that mean? So we've been talking about x squared plus bx plus c uh, so far, but now we are going to add a variable in front, a, and a is not going to equal one. It will never equal one in these situations. Um, I'm gonna try to adjust the light here a little bit. Not helping, that's okay. Um, so it is never going to be one. It might be two, three, four, um, but it's going to be not one. Uh, there are two ways that we can factor these. The first one is called logical reasoning, and that is only important so that you know what I'm talking about when I say logical reasoning. Uh, the other one will be called something different. So method one is logical reasoning. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to find uh, factor pairs for this coefficient. And what that paragraph says is that it's really easy to do that when, the, when a is a prime number. If a is two, three, five, there's only one set of factors for those, one and two, one and three, one and five. But if you get a number like four or six, uh, sometimes there are extra steps that you need to go through because there are more than one factor pair uh, for that number. Um, we'll get into it and you'll see how this all works. Um, let's do the first problem. We've got 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. So I'm going to start off by writing my brackets because the greatest common factor is 1. And I'm going to have x and x, except I need to have a 2 in front because it's 2x squared. There's no other options. Uh, it's got to be 2 and 1. I guess it could be 1 and 2, but that really doesn't change too much. Uh, so I always put the number on this side. 2x times x is x squared. So if I was doing this normally, what I would be thinking is what two numbers multiply to six and add to seven? Well, that's pretty obvious right away. Plus uh, six and plus one would add together um, to get um, plus seven. Now let's do our check to see if this works. 2x times uh, x is 2x squared. 2x times six is plus 12x. 1 times x is just x, and then 1 times 6 is 6. I'm going to add my um, common, um, my like terms, sorry, together. And I've got 2x squared plus 13x plus 6. Now, whoa, that is not what I had at the beginning. I needed a 7 in here. So how we usually work through this is not quite the same. Um, I will show you guys. So we already know that one and six doesn't work. Um, here's what we need to be thinking as we do this. So we've got, let's see, we've got two x squared plus seven x plus six. I'm going to again write my brackets because that other one doesn't work. Doesn't mean we can't get it this time. We have two x and x. That definitely did work. Um, but what we want uh, this time is we want two numbers that still multiply to six, but are going to work together with this two to multiply, um, to add together to seven. So I'm going to write a list of options underneath. We already know that one and six don't work because I tried those, so I'm gonna not write those. The other factors of six are two and three, or we could have three and two. Right? We don't really know which exact one is going to work yet, uh, but both of those, if you multiply them together, get six. What we're going to do next is we're going to take this value, the two that is in front, and we're going to multiply it by what is on the other side. So we are going to take um, three times two and two times two, and those get us six and four. Now what we want is we want to see what two sets, what set of numbers takes um, these numbers, because we're actually multiplying this by one if we think about it, right? If we bring this over here, we could multiply each of these by one, 
by one, we would get two, we would get three. Just the one doesn't change anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at these numbers and these numbers to see what adds up to seven. Uh, two and six does not add to seven, but three and four adds to seven. So this is the pair that we want to use. It is not the numbers that are outside that we place, it is ones that we started with. So um, our answer is 2x in this bracket, x in this bracket, plus 3, plus 2. Okay, I'm going to put a box around it because I'm fairly confident. Let's give it a try in terms of checking. Okay, so 2x times x is 2x squared. That still works as always. 2x times 2 is plus 4x. 3 times x is plus 3x, and 3 times 2 is plus 6. We combine our like terms. 2x squared plus uh, 4x plus 3x is 7x, pardon me, plus 6. And that is what we started with, which means that that is the correct way to factor it. Um, if you have questions about it, leave the questions in the comments. Um, but we've got a few more to try. And that is time uh, for you to give some a try. Let's do this. Pardon me here. My rustling of papers. Okay. Switch it up. Let's do black. I'm not really sure why. 3x squared plus 11x plus 8. Uh, 3 is a prime number. So I know that I, when I break this up into binomials, it is going to be 3x and x. Uh, there's no other way you can break that up. 3x times x is x squared. That is going to be how it is. Uh, what we want is two numbers that multiply together to get 8, and then we're going to play our fancy trick with multiplying to see which ones add to 11. So let's see, we would have 1 and 8, or we could have 8 and 1. We could have 2 and 4, or we could have 4 and 2. I believe that's all that you can have. Yeah, 3 and 5, that all doesn't work. So we're going to then multiply, cross multiply. So this side gets multiplied by three, and this side gets multiplied by one. So we're left with one, eight, two, four. Uh, eight times three is 24, that's three. Four times three is 12, two times three is six. So we're going to be looking at the blue numbers, the outside numbers, to see what adds up to 11. One and 24, no, eight and three. That seems to add to 11, which means that the numbers that we want to use are these. So we have plus 8 and plus 1. That is um, our two-factored binomials. Uh, you can check it. Let's do it without writing it down. 3x times x is x, 3x squared. 3x times 1 is 3x. 8 times x is 8x, and then you add the 8x and 3x together to get 11x. 8 times 1 is 8. So that is correct. Excellent job, everyone. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. We have 8h squared plus 40h plus 18. Uh, right away I see that the greatest common factor is definitely not one. Uh, they're all even, and actually they're all divisible yeah, they're all divisible by two because they're even. So let's pull a two out. So we've got two. What times two would get us eight h squared? Well that'd be four h squared plus twenty h plus nine. Now this is what we're going to factor. And because four is not a prime number, it could be either one of uh, 4 and 1 or 2 and 2. So what we're going to do is try 4 and 1 first. So again we write the 2 out front, it kind of just hangs out. We'll have 4h and h, right, 4 and 1. We're looking at numbers that multiply together to get 9. So we'd have 1 and 9 or 9 and 1. We could have 3 and 3. We don't have to flip 3 around because, well, it's the same number, it'd be the same thing. So now we do our fancy cross multiplying. So we multiply everything here by four. 
So this would be 36, this would be four, this would be 12. These all just stay the same, one, nine, and three, because this value is one. Looking at for two numbers that, mul that add together to get 20. One and 36, no. Nine and four, no. Three and 12, no. So that means that our four and one assumption here was incorrect. Uh, we'll have to restart um, with two and two, because that's our other factor pair. Let's try it. So what we're left with here is two, two H and two H, pardon me. It's a little bit of a close bracket, but you'll get the idea. We are going to see what two numbers multiply together to get uh, nine. Well, we know those from before. That's one and nine, nine and one, three times three. Uh, we're going to multiply each of those sides by 2 because there's a 2 on each side. So times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 18, 2, and 6 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 2, 18, and 6. So now we're looking for numbers that add uh, to 20. So it's not the bottom one because 6 plus 6 is 12, but the top two both work. And it's interesting that the top two both work because these are the same. So it doesn't matter which way we write the one and the nine in this case, um, because both of them add to 20. And if we think about why, it does make sense. I'm gonna do nine and one, because why not? So plus nine and plus one. So that is our answer. That is uh, how we factor those binomials. We've got two more, and then try it on your own. And then uh, we'll let you loose on some problems. Lucky you guys. So let's do this. We have 4x squared minus 21x plus 5. Greatest common factor is 1, so we have nothing to do there. We write our brackets. Let's try 4 and 1 again. Why not? 4x and x. Let's try it. We need numbers that multiply to 5. Well, that would be easy. 1 and 5 and 5 and 1. Cool. We are going to multiply everything. This side goes by one, so that's still one and five. But this side is cross multiplied everything by four. So we get times four is 20, times four is four. We're looking at the blue numbers that add to 21. Uh, that would be the top set, which means we take one and five here that we started with. So we factored this out, uh, we've got plus one, and plus five, we were lucky this time. It worked out. Four and one was the factors that were necessary. Let's do the next problem. I feel like we're on a roll here. We've got six K squared minus 11 K minus 35. Uh, it looks like we might have a greatest common factor other than one, but we don't. Uh, that is all one, so this is a really large one actually. Let's start with six and one for our values for our factors. And we're going to be listing all the um, factors of negative 35. And when the value is negative, it is going to be a little bit more work because you need negative and positive of each pair. So the values could be one and negative 35, or they could be negative 35 and one. They could also be negative one and 35 or 35 and negative 1. You see how we've doubled the number of pairs that we need to try because it is negative? I know it feels uh, maybe redundant, but it is not. Every single one of these pairs is necessary. We are also um, in a need to do 5 and negative 7, as well as negative 7 and 5, and then negative 5 and 7 and, ooh, pardon me, seven and negative five. It is a little bit confusing sometimes. What we're looking for is after we multiply each side by its opposite, so this side is by one. I'm not gonna write it all out again, so these all stay the same. But these all multiply together to get six. So let's, if we multiply these by six, well, it's multiplying the 35s by six, we're getting way too far from 11. Uh, this is like 210. I guess that'd be negative 210 and this would be 210, so that's way too far away. This would be six, 
Uh, 6 and negative 35 doesn't work. This would be negative 6. That doesn't work. This would be, so let's do 6 times negative 7. That's negative 42. That does not work with 5. That does not equal negative 11. Uh, let's see, 6, that's 30. That does not work. That's positive 42, so that definitely won't work. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30, negative 23. None of those seem to work. So that means I'm going to need to switch up these values. Those values don't work. What are the other two uh, factors of six? It's got to be two and three. I need a whole other sheet of paper here. I'll write out the problem again. We've got 6k squared minus 11k minus 35. And instead of uh, six and one, we are going to do, uh, are we going to do three and two or two and three? We're going to do 3k and 2k. Just want to keep it the same as mine, just in case. Again, we're writing out all the factors. So we already did that. So we can just look back. We got minus 35 and 1. Uh, negative, um, pardon me, we got 1 and negative 35. We got negative 1 and 35. We have 35 and negative 1. We have 5 and negative 7. Negative 7 and 5. Negative 5 and 7. 7 and negative 5. Sorry I went so low, I got kind of carried away. We're going to multiply each side by 3 and 2. We're going to cross multiply. So times 2 all the way down, times 3 all the way down. Uh, this is negative 70, so we're pretty far away at this point. Uh, so it's not going to be the 35s, I don't think, because uh, we're going to be even farther away at 105. Uh, 105. So I don't believe that it's going to be anything with the 35s because we're at 70. That just seems way too far away. So we're going to be looking at the 5s and 7s. Uh, let's go negative uh, 7 times 3 is negative 21. This is 15. This is 21. This is negative 15. I feel like we're decently close to negative 11 here. Feels promising. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10. Negative 14. This one's negative 10. This one is 14. Which two sets of blue numbers here add together to get negative 11? Oh, negative 21 and 10. Excellent. That means that the values I need to put into my brackets are 5 and negative 7. And it does matter the order. Uh, because if we did negative 5 and 7 or anything like that, we're getting different values uh, uh, instead of negative 11. So let's place that in there. I picked up the wrong marker. I was so excited. So we have plus 5 and negative 7. Definitely check that. Uh, see if you get what our original problem was. But that is our answer. Um, there is a try it on your own. I'll show that to you. Oh, I haven't been scrolling down. I'm sorry for the YouTube crowd. It doesn't have the problems. I guess you've been seeing me write them on the paper. But um, yes, now it is a try it on your own. Everyone can see. I apologize. Uh, so go ahead. Um, give it a try and come back uh, and unpause it when you're ready. Okay. We are going to do the blue ones. Oh, it's got an, uh, um, an equal sign. Um, that is not what we want. That is, should be a positive sign there. So this should be 4g squared plus 11g plus 6. I apologize about that. Uh, I'm going to have to see if I can correct that. Anyway, so that is 4g squared plus 11g plus 6. There is no greatest common factor other than 1, so we're jumping right into our brackets. I always try the largest numbers first. I don't know why. So 4 and 1 instead of 2 and 2, I'm going to give it a go. I need factors of 6. Factors of 6 would be 1 and 6, 6 and 1, or 2 and 3, 3 and 2. We're going to cross multiply. So let's get our red pen. Cross multiply everything here by 1. So I'm going to leave those. But I need to multiply everything here by 4. Wow. That would be 24, 4, 12, and 8. Which two numbers, sets of numbers, add up to 11? It's not the first set, 1 and 24. Nope. That's 10, 6 and 4. 2 and 12 is 14, but 3 and 8 is 11, which means I need to take this set of numbers that I began with. 3 and 2, and plug them in to our brackets, plus 3 and plus 2. Uh, there you have it. We've solved the problems. You are experts at it now. 
but I'll show you another method next time, uh, and it's just as good. Until next time, though, um, see you then.